Hi everyone, it's Sherry. This is my third attempt at making a video. Um, batteries keep on dying halfway through the video. So I'm going to try to make it quick, uh, and hopefully these batteries won't die out on me. Okay, so time to uh, look at a furnace problem. So, uh, I've been having furnace problems for a little while. Um, no heat. It would work maybe a couple times before it would find the cock out completely. Uh, so it was kind of an intermittent problem at first. However, um, it finally died, and um, I know what the problem is, and I fixed it myself. So I'm very proud of myself. So, first of all, there's the furnace. It's your typical high-efficiency furnace. I've taken the cover off. It's a carrier. Carrier uh, something. Uh, carrier Infinity 96. <laughs> so, like I said, it was intermittent, no heat. And what would happen is uh, if you uh, turned uh, the, the fuse breaker off and um, then started it up again, the fuse, <clears throat> you would actually see it try to restart. So if you look inside that box, not right now because I've got the AC turned off, but what would happen inside that box, there's a glow plug kind of thing. It replaces a pilot light for these high efficiency furnaces. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but right beside that glow plug is the actual gas uh, nozzle, whatever you want to call it, where the gas comes out and heats up and makes a flame and then of course goes into the furnace. So what was happening is the glow plug was going, it was going orange hot, you can actually see it in there, it was trying its best, and but no gas going into it and hence not lighting up. After three times it would finally give up and uh, stop. And you would get an error message on the actual control board and I know this is a flip camera here and you can't really see much but there's a status light there and if you read that it gives uh, da dots and dashes. Count the actual number of um, dots and dashes, and then you go to the back of your uh, panel here for your uh, heater, and it tells you what the problem is. Mine was a 34, ignition proving fault. So I knew the problem was somewhere in the uh, the gas valve. So I've got the cover off, the plastic cover off. That's why it looks a little different maybe than yours. Um, and so something like this. If you put that back on, it looks something like that. Anyway, uh, the problem is the valve. So uh, instead of getting the whole valve replaced, which is a lot of money apparently, I decided to uh, look into it a little bit more. So what I did is I took uh, the metal plate off. Uh, that goes on there like that. Oh, sorry. So I took that off, took the plastic cover off, <clears throat> and then you'll see two solenoids. This solenoid here uh, is the big one. That's actually the one that opens the gas valve here and lets the gas go through. Well, what was wrong is this solenoid was was open. At the time I pulled it out, it was completely open. So what I did is I took that um, coil out and measured the resistance. And there's two prongs. You can kind of see it there sitting in there. I'm not going to take it out. This is fixed. Uh, but you pull that coil out, put an ohmmeter on it, and you'll see that. Uh, well, I don't know what your problem, but uh, maybe it could be. Uh, you'll see that the coil's open. It should read probably about 50, 40 or 50 ohms. I mean, it's just copper wire, right? So it's nothing um, high resistance. When I measured it on my ohm meter, I was getting something like, you know, uh, 2 mega ohms or something like that. So it's clearly open. Well, the problem is, is this, and uh, I can't really show it, but right there where the actual enamel wire, so this coil has enameled wire, it, it's a crimp or it's a push on. So these prongs that go inside the furnace there, this and, and this part here is where the wire connects to it, well, it just crimps on. And then sure enough, after five, ten years, what happens is that push crimp actually comes loose. And that's exactly what was wrong with mine. So what I had to do, and it's not easy work, it's uh, very delicate work, you have to pull the prong, well, first of all, take the coil out, go to your bench, and pull the prongs out really, really gently. Make sure you don't break the wire because on one side you've got plenty of wire because it's the it's the outside um, wire. So you can take one loop off if you have to. Then scrape down the enamel and solder it on. So I put the peg back in. I resoldered it. Uh, the second wire was short. So and you can't get it out because it, it actually goes into the center of the coil. So you really don't have much play with regards to that wire. So be very careful. Um, I had a little bit sticking out, I, I scraped the insulation off of that enameled wire, and then I got another small piece of wire, and I know you can't see it, but I soldered it to the prong first, I put the prong back in, soldered it to the prong, and then the other end I connected to the actual coil wire. And sure enough, I put uh, I put an ohmmeter on it, and I get 40 to 50 ohms, somewhere around there. I put it back into the actual gas valve, and it worked. And it still works to this day. So it's a com I, I think it's a common problem. It's a, it's, a sh it's a crappy design, first of all. You shouldn't be pushing prongs onto wires and expect it to last uh, forever. 
quite frankly, I think they do that on purpose because most people, in fact, you can't 